that this morning. Good morning, welcome to the Baldavis Church, showing people all they can become in Christ. And this morning it's Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day mums. I said happy Mother's Day to that mother there several times this morning and I, I've said it just uh, lots of mums coming in and one said you're the first one that said that to me this morning. So I'm thinking there may be some other mums here and no one said happy Mother's Day to them yet and we've got a great big opportunity now to move all around the auditorium. Find a mum, give her a hug, have a little dance with her if you will <laughs> and say happy Mother's Day. How beautiful, how beautiful is your love, Lord. How wonderful, how wonderful is your love. How amazing is your love, Lord. Father God, I want to thank you for every person in this place, for the experience of your love, for the receiving of your love and the giving of your love. As we stand together, as we listen to one another, love, sing of your love as we worship you because of your love. Father, we just want to bask in your love, to take this moment with us, to be ever in the Father's love, to know that it's deep within us, that it's locked within us, and all we have to do is look within and focus upon you, Lord. You are a mighty God. You are awesome and wonderful, and we thank you that you sent your son that we may live in the experience of your love shed abroad in our hearts by your spirit in Jesus name amen amen please be seated Lord Ooh. <laughs> in the way on the way in this morning you received your newsletter in there I just want to draw your attention to the women's conference flyer so mark it in your diaries, or you mothers, or you women, or you young ladies. And happy Mother's Day to every mother in the place. So 24th of August, block it in your diary, on your calendar, don't forget. More information will follow as it unfolds as the Lord leads. Otherwise, there's your care card in there. We use the care card, it's the blue one. We use this for um, communication in the life of the church. If you're new with us this morning and you want to say that you're with us and you want to make yourself known or you're just feeling a bit timid and say, I am here, you can fill one of these in with your details. If there's anything you want to know about the Baldivis Church, the life of the church, or you want to tick a box, you want to receive midweek post, how to become a Christian, renewing your commitment. Any of those boxes on there, you can tick those. Or otherwise, you can just use it as a communication tool to send an encouragement note to somebody or a pray, prayer and praise point. Meanwhile, church news will be on the screen and you'll be able to pop them in the tithe and offering buckets after church news. Helps if you don't stand on the cord. The house is full of joy this morning. It's very full. It's fantastic. Welcome this morning. Happy Mother's Day. Did you get blessed this morning? Hope so. Hope so. Always. That's right. Always. My sister, probably as we speak right now, is having her baby dedicated. She has sat for, oh, well, she's been married for a long time, but she's 44 and she had her first baby in February after finally saying, <laughs> all right, I give up. But I remember sitting here, and this has nothing to do with me, I just underline that. We always had that verse up there, sing, O barren woman, you who never bore a child. And Pastor Gordon preaches from that quite frequently. And I remember one morning him preaching, and I was like, Lord, she's singing for you. How much more does she need to sing for you? She's faithful to you. Bless her. It was sun stand still. That was my prayer that I was almost too scared to pray, but it was like, I will do it. But you know what? It's got nothing to do with me. It's all about God and his ability to do. Everything's possible for God. We put the im 
I'm, I am. We maybe put the I am in the way and get in the way of God doing possible things in our lives every day. A little bit of tithe talk from the New Testament. In 2 Corinthians, now about the collection for God's people. Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income. That could be it right there. A sum of money in keeping with his income. As you come and give thanks to God for all that he does possible in your life every day. As you give to him of your gifts, your talents and your finances. May you know that you are blessed. Let's stand together, church. As this, we sing this next song, the buckets will be passed around. You can place your tithes, your offerings and your care cards in those. Father, we lift our voices this morning to cry out, Hosanna. Oh, the Lord brings salvation. Thank you, our God and Saviour. Thank you that we have the privilege of being in your house this morning to sing your praises and to receive from you. Uh, Father, this morning we rededicate our lives to you afresh. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Please be seated. I just want to say, folks, if you're not in a connect group or don't know what one is, I think we have 14 connect groups in the life of our church in most suburbs in the region around us and we've just started a, a fantastic campaign uh, last week uh, called Breaking Intimidation and uh, I would love you to be in a connect group and if you want to know how to get into one come and find me after the service and track me down and I'll help you if you can't find me Catherine over here. Catherine, would you stand for a minute? Catherine gave the care card talk a moment ago. Just look around, smile at them all. That's it. Wonderful. See Catherine and she'll hook you up into one also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That's great. I, just, I need to tell you something. I, did, I mentioned it last Sunday night for Sunday night church. don't think I've said it yet definitively in Sunday morning church, but uh, at the end of July, we will be moving to two Sunday morning services. <laughs> An 8.30 and a 10.30. So you can think about that now. Think, which one will I come to? You know, I, I'm thinking some of you will be thinking in winter I'll be coming to the 10.30 and in summer to the 8.30. That's what some of you are thinking. Well, well you sort that out. And, and uh, you, you know, uh, there'll be a few changes, but there'll be the 8.30 and the 10.30. Ecclesiastes 11.4 says, If you wait until the wind and the weather are just right, you'll never plant anything and never harvest anything. Nothing's going to be ever just right, uh, but you get, try to get as right as you can. And so we've got a lot of planning to do between now and then, and uh, we'll look for volunteers. Uh, some of our volunteers said, this is fantastic, uh, particularly fly-in, fly-out people and, and people on shift work. They said, I will volunteer for stuff in nursery and kids' church now because I won't have to miss a service. I, I, I'll volunteer in the first one and then come back to the second one or vice versa. And uh, a lot of you, you don't have to miss anything. You're in nursery come back to the next one or you're, 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 you're in, in the first one do nursery in the second one Hear, hearing what I'm saying and we're looking for volunteers so just sowing a few seeds here guys because uh, it's volunteers that make the place happen uh, you know we do have staff paid staff but volunteers our church is very volunteer intensive and I'm so pleased that uh, you're volunteers in doing what God would have you to do right here in this place well folks last week Last week we began a, a little mini-series uh, to kind of think about what kind of things you would be known by or I would be known by, whether you would be known by positive virtues or by perhaps not so endearing qualities. What, what would people think of, you know, when, when they see you? And so today is Mother's Day and I thought, well, uh, you, you know, what would, what would and what should mothers be known by? What qualities or features would a mother be known by and in a few moments time I'm going to show you a little video clip uh, kind of extolling the virtues, the qualities uh, that a functional mother is known by and, and mothers you'll all go amen, amen, amen. But before I, I do that I just want to give the framework again uh, for the question what will you be known by? Uh, you may be known as the tall person, the tall person. Uh, you may be known as the person with the red hair. 
You may be known as the person who plays drums every Sunday. You may be known as the person who speaks really fast. You may be known as the person with the deep voice. You may be known as a lot of things, you know, something like, you may be known as the person who drives like a maniac. <laughs> Two Kings, 920. The watchman's looking out and uh, Jehu is coming and he, this is like over, you know, like 3,000 years ago. You know, you think, you think driving like a maniac is something that just sort of like happened in the last little while. Watch this, 2 Kings 9.20. The driving is like that of Jehu, son of Nimshi. He drives like a maniac. So what will you be known by? Don't, don't be known by that. Just slow it down, all right? Slow it down. Luke 6.44. Each tree is known by its fruit. Uh, if a tree has apples hanging from it, it ain't an orange tree, right? You know, if it, if it only has one piece of fruit uh, hanging from it per year, it's not a very productive tree, right? If the tree never bears any fruit, although it's a fruit tree, but it just doesn't bear any fruit, uh, unless you want to keep it there for decorative purposes, you might want to re use your real estate for something more productive than a tree that just takes up space. And that's how Jesus thought about it. Jesus was on his way back to Jerusalem from Bethany, like eight miles out of Jerusalem, and he came across, he was hungry, and he came across a, a, a fruit tree, a fig tree. And it was just fruitless, but he went up to it and watch this, hungry Jesus. Matthew 21, 19. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. And then he said to it, Jesus spoke to the fig tree. He said, may you never bear fruit again. And immediately the tree with it. Each tree is known by its fruit, also by its lack of fruit as a fruitless tree. And because Jesus is the creator of all things and he created everything to be fruitful, this was not fulfilling its creative purpose, so Jesus got rid of the fruitless tree. What will you be known by? Proverbs 20 verse 11, even a child is known by his actions. You can tell a lot about a child, can't you? You know, you can just tell a lot about a child. By the way, he interacts with other kids, you know, in the playground, at school. And parents, mothers, the things we really hate about our kids is when they do things that we don't like and we know it's just what we did. Yeah? What would you be known by? Proverbs 10.9 uh, in the New King James, He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known by someone who walks crooked ways. So what will you be known by? What will you be known for? And today is Mother's Day, and I, as I think about things that the mother might be known by, what she could be known by, what she should be known by, what she is known, what features, what qualities. Uh, I'm going to kind of tease that by showing you a little video clip right now. Mums, tune in, dads, to everyone. Watch this clip. <laughs> what will you be known by? Well, for the remainder of our message, I want to Look at something about mothers from Proverbs 31. And if you've ever read Proverbs 31, it comes in two parts. Uh, part one is about the king. We're not even thinking about that. Part two is about the virtuous woman, virtuous wife, virtuous mother. And incidentally, it, it, it's all of those. Uh, if you think it's just the virtuous woman, no, this woman is described as a mother and a wife. And so, so I, I, I'm going to treat the second half of this proverb, and many scholars think this anyway, as it's a proverb in its own right. It's kind of like an editor got together and thought, oh man, we only need 31 proverbs, and I've got 32. What am I going to do? I know, I'm going to marry these two together and make it one. Well, I'm splitting them again because I think this one was written, why would you put this with this King Lemuel? I don't know that you would. And what, what you've got in this second uh, part of the proverb, Proverb 31b, which I'm treating as a proverb in its own right, it uses a, a, a poetic literary device called the acrostic. And what that means is each verse begins uh, with successive letters of the Hebrew alphabet. That's what the poet's done there, uh, Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, He, Wav, and so on. So if it was in English, it would be A, B, C, D, F, G, right through to Z. And, and uh, you would say, it is the A to Z of motherhood. That's what you got right here. So in keeping with the, uh, I'm not going to do that because you see the Hebrew alphabet doesn't quite marry up to the English one and so that would be a tough job so but in keeping with the spirit of this uh, proverb I've extracted 
the relevant mother material, and uh, I've come up with the acronym MOTHER, M-O-T-H-E-R, and you've got it in your notes in your newsletter. You can check that out, and uh, by the way, uh, the whole idea of these newsletters, by the way, is to take them home, not to leave them on the floor. Uh, so take it home with you, and then you can put those little flyers on your fridge. Uh, but in here we've got the new, the, it's in there, the little acronym MOTHER, so you can follow that through with me. So here we go. Uh, the M of MOTHER from this proverb uh, is MAKES AND IS CLOTHED. MAKES AND IS CLOTHED. Proverbs 31, 24, 25, she makes linen garments... She is clothed with strength and dignity. Uh, she can laugh at the days to come. This is a poem about a woman, about a wife, about a mother. And the poem uses this literary device again. There's lots of literary devices there, not just of acrostics and acronyms, uh, but of making garments to clothe others while she herself clothes herself, not so much with fabrics, but with strength and dignity. Uh, that is, she just doesn't just wear the finest clothes. She may well do and wear them well, uh, but she adorns herself with good deeds. Uh, she clothes herself with strength and with dignity. And, and it's, uh, that's a recurring theme throughout your scriptures, by the way, ladies, particularly about women. It, 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 it's again and again. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 10, the Apostle Paul writing about women, he says, adorning themselves with good deeds. So not just wearing fancy fabrics, but wearing good deeds. Uh, Peter writes, 1 Peter 3, 4, the beauty of your inner self. And Proverbs 31 and verse 23, she is clothed with strength and dignity because those are the kind of clothes she makes. Those are the ones that are valuable. So M is for makes and is clothed. O is for oversight of her family. Oversight of her family. Proverbs uh, 31, 27 says, She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Uh, what will you be known by? The lazy mum. <laughs> what will you be known by? What is the noble mother known by? Well, she watches over her family. Uh, uh, not, 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 not that she watches and dad doesn't watch, by the way, guys. If you say, well, I'll take that home. The Bible says, mum watches. I don't have to do any more watching. I'm not doing anything. But she watches. Listen, guys. Listen, lady. She watches in a way that mothers watch, which I can assure you is totally different to the way in which dads watch. It's a different deal. She watches over the affairs of her household. Uh, and while the affairs of her household do include all those things you saw on that, on that, on that clip, uh, food and clothing and maintenance, janitor, I love that word, janitor, uh, the big ticket issues over which she watch watches relate to keeping the kids not just on track kids, but on God's track, on God's track. Uh, uh, but you say, I I've read the Bible, isn't that also a dad responsible responsibility isn't that also that some of you are thinking some of your mums are thinking that isn't that yeah well today is not dad's day dad so back off all right your day comes in september so just hang on this is mum's day this is mother's day william mccain he's a, a a bible commentator commenting on this on this verse she watches over the affairs of her household he says this she is equally adept at instruction and management. Alert and energetic, she has her finger on the pulse of her household and nothing escapes her scrutiny and control. <laughs> I was thinking, kids, just when you thought you were getting away with it, bring in the mum factor. <laughs> nothing escapes her scrutiny and control. She has an inbuilt radar. You thought you were getting away, but it doesn't get in under the mum radar at all. Nothing escapes her scrutiny and control. Let's put that up there. Do we, got, we got that in just all by itself. Nothing escapes her scrutiny and control. Let's whack it on there if you do. If it's not there, bad luck, just read it again. Nothing escapes her scrutiny and control. O is for oversight of her family. Are you with me, guys? T, M-O-T, T, teaches her family. Proverbs 31, verse 26. She speaks with wisdom 
and faithful instruction is on her tongue. In, in a bygone era, I, I believe this is so, uh, that, that uh, you know, most mums would have been stay-at-home mums in a bygone era in Western society. I, I think that's, that's so. Uh, such has not ever been the case in my household, Lara, ever since we were married and we had five kids, she just have a child and go right back to work again. She just kept on working, you know. She's never been the stay-at-home mum. She's, and yet all this stuff is still true of her. She go out and do the work in the marketplace, and I want to say this, this, uh, this uh, noble mother in Proverbs 31 is not the stay-at-home mum. You think, oh, look at all that stuff she's doing, you know, watching over a family and, and, and clothing herself with dignity and strength. Obviously, she's home all day, nothing else to do. Watch this. Verse 13, Proverbs 31. She selects wool and flax. Where? In the marketplace. Verse 14. She brings fr food from down at the local deli. She brings food from afar. Verse 16. She considers a field and by it she's dealing in real estate. Verse 16, she plants a vineyard. Oh my goodness, she's out there doing vineyards, all right? Verse 18, she sees that her trading is profitable. What would we say that she's... She, she's a stock market guru. And she's trading. This lady is doing business. Uh, verse 20, she opens her arms to the poor. And verse 24, she's a saleswoman. She sells linen garments. This mum is busy in the marketplace and is not a stay-at-home mum at all and yet she still watches over the affairs of her household and she still speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She is training up her kids in the way that they should go. GKGW stands for Growing Kids God's Way and some of you are about to embark on that very exciting journey because the first lesson in your series is it's Monday evening and uh, all of the uh, resource arrived on Friday morning and for those of you who don't have yours yet, it's available for you in the bookshop and you need to get hold of that. And, and as we were getting ready for uh, this series of classes, Growing Kids God's Way, we used a promotional video clip here and, and uh, it, that video clip pointed out that one of parents, one of the ve best investments you will ever make is the wise, godly investment uh, of godly training into the lives of your, of, of, of your children and the children with whom we have to do. And this clip uh, reminds us in so doing, we leave a legacy for the next generation. And so this mum is leaving a legacy. Uh, she, she, wants this, she wants this teaching to go on to the next generation. Proverbs 31, 26, faithful instruction is on her tongue. Uh, uh, you know, Proverbs, uh, Ephesians, that's Proverbs, but Ephesians 6, 4 in the Good News Translation says, Parents, do not treat your children in such a way as to make them angry. Instead, raise them up with Christian discipline and instruction. So you're not there to needle and nag your kids and make them cranky but you are there to instruct them and you're there to instruct them with Christian discipline and instruction mums. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says train up a child in the way that he should go and even when he's old he will not depart from it. So you're investing in godly principles in the way that he should go it says and this relates to two things number one in the way that he should go on the God pathway. Uh, that, he, that she should go on the God pathway. Your child needs to be trained in Christ's likeness and, and, and in the way to a right relationship with God. And mums, that's, a, that's a mum thing and a dad thing. Good training will sow seeds that will germinate and put down deep roots uh, in, in the life of that child. Will that, that will stand that child in good stead all the days of his or her life. Secondly, secondly, in the way that he should go relates to the way that God has shaped that child. And God has shaped every child differently. God has shaped every individual on planet Earth for a purpose and everyone is different. And, and, and sometimes this can be a frustrating thing, Mum, is that 
your daughter is not going to want to do the same sporting kind of things that you did and the same arts and crafty kind of things that you did and do, and they, they will despise those. And the wise mum is going to be sensitive to this fact, this principle, that maybe, just maybe, that daughter, that son will not have the same specific interest, mum, that you have or had. Different sporting interests, different arts and crafts, different interests. And in keeping with that sensitivity, and the wise mum will invest in that child and help that child uh, to become all that child can become. Showing people all they can become in Christ. I've got another little video clip for you. I think this is going to bless you. <laughs> Tears for teaching and training our kids, or other kids training us, you know. H, honoured by her family. Honoured by her family. Proverbs 31, 28, 29. Her children rise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. He says, many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. So try that, guys. See how it goes. Proverbs 31, 31. Honour her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Uh, I, I think about this, you know, and, and uh, this, this, what this is saying is that the dad in the household and the kids are all praising the mother. They're honouring her. And, you know, you mightn't get that opportunity today. And, and uh, you know, it could be that there's someone else here and no one yet has said even Happy Mother's Day to you. And I'm thinking right now is a good time to honour the mums. Come on. This is for the mums. You can do better than that. Come on. I, I am so glad we've got so many God-honouring mums in the house. And for all of those who have a mum and she's far away and not in your neighbourhood and I think that you can use your iPhone, your smartphone, any other phone and call her today and honour that mother. Would you do that? Do that. E is for exemplary, M-O-T-H-E. Proverbs 31, 29. Many women do noble things but you surpass them all. And when you read this in, in context, you understand that these words about the mum being such an example, surpassing them all of doing noble things. These words are actually said in context by this woman's husband and her kids. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. They are bragging, the dad and the kids are bragging on the exemplary nature of the mother of the house. Is that cool? R is for respect for the Lord. Proverbs 31 verse 30, charm is deceptive. And beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And, and now mothers, mothers, because mothers say this is for you, but it is for everyone here today. I want to say you can be as clever as you like, all of us, but it's really focus on mums. You can be as charming as you like. You can be as physically beautiful as you like. You can be one of those people that has the wit that you share minute by minute on Facebook or any other social media. But if you do not fear the Lord as much as you have charm and beauty and wit or anything else, you are a dud. Might be a pleasant, beautiful, charming dud, unless you fear the Lord. The mum has got the, this mum, this mum, Proverbs 31, has got the charm and the beauty thing in perspective. Huh? The perspective is the fear of the Lord, respect for the Lord above all else. Now this uh, message this morning is part of our mini-series, uh, What Will You Be Known By? Luke 6.37, every tree is known by its fruit. Uh, Proverbs 20 verse 11, even a child is known by his actions. What will you be known by? What will you be known by? The noble mother of Proverbs 31 is known by qualities and virtue that bring honour her way. They bring honour her way. What will you be known by? But then, you see, her husband and her children are also known as individuals who honour the mother of the household. That, that, that's, that's what they're known by. And she, in turn, is known as a woman who honours and respects the Lord. What will you be known by? I, I want to be known... I want to be known as that person who continually urges all of those with whom I have to do to become all they can become in Christ. But more than that, 
I want to be known as that person who actually sees it happening, uh, that you will become all that you can become in Christ. Father in heaven, right now I want to pray for every individual in this house. I want to pray for the mums. Lord, I believe today is just that great opportunity for honour to be heaped upon every mother in the house. Every mum that's here, though, may she know your smile on, on, on her life today. And Father, for everyone here, may they move closer to becoming all that they can become in our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, as I think about that, I think that every individual in order to do that needs to be in Christ. And so I want to pray for the mums, I want to pray for the dads, I want to pray for every individual in this house today, uh, Lord, that they would take this opportunity to move so much closer to you and to your purposes for them uh, by ensuring today that they are in Christ, that their lives are surrendered to our Lord and Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, it's in his name that I commend these people to you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand, folks. We've got a song to sing. And it's a great song. You can give voice to your commitment to Christ today. Uh, that's what I'm encouraging you to do. And, and for those of you who have never actually uh, made a commitment to Christ, never said definitively, I want to follow him, you kind of just come to church, do the churchy religious things, why not make it real today? Why, why not make it real? And so I'm going to surrender to Jesus today. I'm going to give him my life. I'm going to give him my all. And if you're doing that, you can go where you stand or sit, but I'm going to encourage you to come and stand down the front this morning. Uh, some of you say, well, I've done that, but I kind of need to get back to where I was, you know, to the right place with God. Come and rededicate yourself to Christ this morning. Come and stand down the front. You say, well, no, neither of those are me. I just need more of God. That's what I want. Come and stand down the front this morning. Would you do that? As we sing our song, you step out this morning in Jesus' name. Let's sing. so much. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The Father after which every family on earth is named. Thank you, Lord, that you love us and put us in families. Thank you for this church family. Father, as people seek to get on the pathway that you're calling us onto to become all that we can become in, in Christ. Holy Spirit, help us all this morning to do that. Help, give us clarity of thought. Give us wisdom. Help us to make wise decisions. Pour out your blessing on us, your blessing of grace, your blessing of being in your purposes. Thank you, our Father. And I want to pray for the mums today, once more, Father, that they'll know your smile today in, in just such a special way, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Folks, uh, just a couple of things before you move out. Uh, this corner right over here we call Prayer Corner. If you're needing prayer for anything, there'll be folk over in that corner to pray with you and for you and give you a word of encouragement this morning. So make your way over there if you're needing prayer for anything. Don't, don't, uh, don't leave without doing that. Uh, this now becomes a place of ministry in this auditorium. So any conversations you began or are about to begin, uh, best place for those would be in the foyer, in the coffee shop area at the rear of the coffee shop or in the bookshop for you GKGW people going to get your material or breaking intimidation people in the bookshop. Um, if you met someone new this morning, why don't you invite them into the coffee shop and buy them a cappuccino and a muffin? It would be fantastic. Beautiful autumnal weather out there at the rear of the building to sit down and have a coffee before you take off today. Mums, be blessed today. Uh, if you've got a mum, bless her, would you? And uh, mum, sit under that blessing and receive it and have a fantastic day. Bless you, everybody.